Good morning. I'm Anne Montgomery, Editor-in-Chief of Bioprocess International, and I'm speaking today with Aditya Bhatt, who is the Vice President of Technology at Aver Instruments. Welcome. Happy to, be, happy to be here. Can you begin by telling us what Aver Instruments does? Yeah, sure. Um, so Aber Instruments started out in, um, in Wales, mm -hmm. in the United Kingdom, in a small little town called Aberystwyth. Mm -hmm. In fact, that is where um, uh, the, the name of the company comes from, mm -hmm. Aber Instruments, and that is where our company headquarters are. Mm -hmm. uh, in recent years, we've also um, expanded. Uh, we now have um, a subsidiary in the US, in Northern mm -hmm. Virginia. Mm -hmm. uh, Aber Instruments has been focused on providing biomass measurement solutions to the bioprocess and the brewing industries as well mm -hmm. uh, for the past 30 years or so. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, at last count, I think we had about 130, we had customers in about 135 countries. Mm -hmm. um, so Aber Instruments invented uh, a technology back in 1988 uh, that is based around dielectric spectroscopy and the use of dielectric spectroscopy to measure cell concentrations in bioprocesses. The technology is quite unique mm -hmm. um, in that it measures these cell, con cell concentrations online, mm -hmm. in real time, in situ, but it also only measures live cells. It doesn't measure dead cells. So what, um, what you get uh, at the end of the day is a detailed, complete picture of how your cells are growing in the bioreactor. Mm -hmm. Can you explain how Aber technology actually works? Yeah, of course. Um, so that's quite interesting. Um, so my, my background is biology, mm -hmm. and I try and look at it from that perspective. Um, so essentially, we measure two parameters. We measure capacitance and conductivity. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> which is actually why sometimes dielectric spectroscopy as a technology is simply referred to as capacitance measurement. Mm -hmm. Capacitance, very simply put, is the ability of any substance to hold charge around itself. And why this is important from a, a bioprocess point of view mm -hmm. is down to the structure of the cell membrane. Um, a cell that is alive, um, a cell membrane that is intact, uh, has the ability to hold charge around itself under the influence of an electric mm -hmm. field. And under the influence of this electric field that the ABBA probe generates, uh, each tiny cell would would have a buildup of charge around the live cell membranes and each tiny cell would therefore act as a capacitor. Mm -hmm. So more the number of capacitors or live cells in the suspension, the more the capacitance mm -hmm. measured across the suspension. Um, so what you end up getting is a real-time online in-situ measurement of your live cell concentration. Mm -hmm. In contrast, dead cells, uh, which uh, more often than not have leaky membranes mm -hmm. with respect to charge, are not measured by the technology uh, mm -hmm. because they do not contribute to this overall capacitance because they're not capable of holding charge around themselves mm -hmm. under the influence of this electric field that I mentioned. Um, so yeah, so uh, the, uh, the good thing about the technology is that it's a direct measurement of cell concentration mm -hmm. as opposed to some of the indirect methods of uh, cell, concentri cell concentration mm -hmm. measurement out there. And it's because of this reason that over the past 30 years, it has been used for uh, such a wide variety of applications. Mm -hmm. How does it fit into the current needs of the bioprocess industry? Yeah, so um, there has been a strong drive in the past few years in the bioprocess industry to measure what you call the critical process parameters mm -hmm. like pH, dissolved oxygen, and indeed biomass. Now, um, what the, the, the objective of, it, of this is to get a complete understanding of what's going on in that bioreactor. Mm -hmm. uh, and this has been further bolstered by the FDA PAT initiative or mm -hmm. the Process Analytical right. Technology Initiative. And that essentially says that you need to monitor the critical process parameters that impact the critical quality attributes mm -hmm. of your process. So biomass most certainly is one such critical process mm -hmm. parameter. Um, it's quite interesting because if you look at some of the other critical process parameters like pH, dissolved oxygen, etc., they are uh, m monitored without exception, but not mm -hmm. only that, they're monitored online in real time. Mm -hmm. Biomass is also measured without exception, but oftentimes um, you use the offline methods uh, mm -hmm. to determine cell concentration. The, um, the challenges associated with offline methods of measurement are quite well known. Uh, but what happens is overall you end up with an incomplete picture uh, or, in, or an incomplete understanding of this critical process parameter. Mm -hmm. And that's where capacitance comes in quite nicely mm -hmm. because, uh, because here's a technology that can give you 
lifestyle concentration in real time online in situ without the need to take samples. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so which is why capacitance then gives you a complete understanding of this very critical process, mm -hmm. uh, process parameter. In addition to, to FDA's PAT initiative, it is obviously common knowledge that our, in that our industry is talking more and more about process intensification right. and continuous mm -hmm. manufacturing. A very important aspect of continuous manufacturing is uh, automatic cell density control mm -hmm. and which involves ma maintaining your cells at a specific high concentration in their exponential phase of growth. Mm -hmm. uh, automatic uh, feed and bleed strategies are used or employed mm -hmm. for this purpose and capacitance is ideal for this as well because um, the, the use of capacitance to maintain your cells at a specific concentration is quite a straightforward application. So, mm. uh, so all things considered, over the years, cap capacitance technology or indeed dielectric spectroscopy has become an integral part of, uh, not just an integral part, but also a crucial and reliable part of mm. bioprocess monitoring and control uh, in the bioprocess industry. Mm -hmm. What applications has this technology been used for? Yeah, um, so uh, Aber, uh, as a company, we offer a wide range of probes, you know, mm -hmm. so we do 25 millimeter uh, diameter probes, we do 12 millimeter diameter probes, mm -hmm. but in recent times we also launched the, uh, uh, a 7.5 millimeter diameter probe, which mm -hmm. is the smallest diameter capacitance probe on the market. Mm -hmm. Now what that means is that uh, this allows for capacitance technology to be used earlier in smaller scale process development. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about things like shake flasks or uh, the mini bioreactors. Mm -hmm. Of course, the larger diameter probes are used in some of the larger glass and stainless steel bioreactors uh, that are often employed in process development and through to manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also do single-use um, capacitance sensors, so we are the only company that manufactures uh, single-use capacitance sensors, uh, that which, which then means the technology can be used with single-use uh, mm -hmm. RM and STR bags. So we have that covered as well. In, in terms of the cells, the technology works quite well uh, with bacteria, yeast, fungi, uh, plant cells, animal cells like mammalian cells or insect mm -hmm. cells. Uh, in my opinion, the most basic use of capacitance technologies mm -hmm. when you monitor your cell concentration uh, such that you get a fingerprint of your process mm -hmm. and that fingerprint can then be used for troubleshooting you know so mm -hmm. if your process is deviating from that golden fingerprint mm -hmm. Uh, then, then, then you can troubleshoot just based on real-time capacitance measurements mm -hmm. um, but capacitance can also bring additional value mm -hmm. when you actually control something based on the real-time capacitance measurement. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, uh, so you could either control cell concentration uh, based on automatic feed and bleed strategies that, we, that I mentioned before, uh, but then you can also control the feed of nutrients based on capacitance. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, Biogen, um, Biogen routinely uses capacitance in manufacturing to, to control the feed of complex nutrients. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in fact, Biogen published about four papers in the last four or five years, which is, they're all about y employing capacitance in manufacturing for various applications, mm -hmm. such as um, troubleshooting, seed transfers, and mm -hmm. feeding, um, uh, uh, f feeding complex nutrients based on raw capacitance. So, so they, don't they don't convert capacitance right. to, to offline cells per milliliter. Um, in addition, a capacitance has, be used has been used for viral production processes, mm -hmm. uh, for harvest point detection, or indeed the success of the viral, vi viral infection. Mm -hmm. um, um, it has also been used um, to determine the success of a scalar process because of mm -hmm. the range that we offer. Capacitance can actually be used across various scales. Right. Um, and so it can be used, used as a key performance indicator mm -hmm. to determine whether your scalar process has actually been successful. Uh, yeah, so quite a wide array of applications mm -hmm. really. Seems, seems quite versatile. Yeah, so wha yeah. Where do you see this going in the next few years? Yeah, so that's, uh, it's, it's been very exciting to see how capacitance has evolved, or capacitance technology rather, mm -hmm. has evolved uh, over the past 30 years and indeed where it is going. One thing that comes to mind immediately is um, the cell therapy and regenerative medicine mm -hmm. sector. And this application is certainly going to benefit from a technology such as capacitance mm -hmm. and, or dielectric spectroscopy. And the reason being that with cell therapy, uh, the, 
the, the, the your end product are the cells, mm -hmm. right? So um, here's a technology that's going to give you your life cell concentration without having the need to open up the bioreactor to contamination risks by drawing uh -huh. a sample. So, um, so I believe dialectic spectroscopy would add a lot of value to to the cell therapy applications. Uh, we've also had some very interest, interesting work done uh, with our collaboration with North Carolina State University mm -hmm. where capacitance was used in 3D tissue applications to, mo to monitor the cell concentration in 3D tissues mm -hmm. non-disruptively. Uh, there's also been work done um, at uh, academic and, and industrial work done uh, that, uh, that suggests that capacitance is more um, sensitive to cell death. It detects cell death earlier than some of the other methods of measurement such as the tripe and mm -hmm. blue dye exclusion method. What that means is capacitance is more sensitive to the onset of apoptosis mm -hmm. and um, um, so um, it, because it's more sensitive to the onset of apoptosis, mm -hmm. uh, it, can, it can potentially reverse apoptosis as opposed to tripe and blue measurements which are more sensitive to, to mid or late apoptotic mm -hmm. stages. Um, so that's quite interesting. Right. Uh, groups are, uh, gr uh, several groups have explored the use of multi-frequency capacitance measurements as well. Mm -hmm. uh, what that means is you um, measure capacitance at 25 different frequencies and it can give you, uh, you, you can derive additional frequency scanning parameters that can then be correlated to some critical events in your process. Oh. That can add value as well. And I think, um, I think over the next few years, more companies would follow Biogen's footsteps mm -hmm. and sort of start using capacitance and trusting capacitance to base their control strategies on raw capacitance itself uh, in, in the manufacturing uh, in, the, in manufacturing environments. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a very uh, very interesting time for the technology and indeed for our industry. Very timely. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Right. Well, thank you for speaking with me today at sure. uh, BPI West TV. Sure. I'm Ann Montgomery, Editor-in-Chief of Bioprocess International. Thank you for watching.